Hey, thank you for for watching this with the commentary. I have never done a commentary, so one of the main reasons I wanted to do it with this film is uh, for good practice for later projects, and I am currently stuck in quarantine uh, due to the coronavirus. So uh, what better time than to, to practice? So uh, real quick, I just want to mention the music in this movie is all done by my dad, Jared Campbell. And... Uh, believe it or not, trying to figure out what to do with the intro uh, was a lot harder than what we anticipated uh, because it would ultimately set up the whole the whole mood and tone of the movie. And as you can see, already it's kind of quirky and dorky. So uh, he kind of had this fun idea to for that music that you just heard and or are hearing, and he. Uh, basically said it was like a Judd Apatow opening and I, I, I hundred percent uh, was okay with that. Cause I love Judd Apatow and Lorenzo right there. Uh, when we start, before we started shooting this, he came up to me and he requested for his character to poop with a shirt off. And that's something that I never would have thought I'd been asked in my life. Uh, but he stood by it and he said it would add a lot to his character. And I actually agree. Um, I'm very glad that he came came up with the idea. And a lot of the actors in this actually brought a lot of their own ideas forth and really brought a lot of character development uh, through their acting, um, which which is something I never would have expected. You know, um, this was actually my longest project I've worked on yet, so it was definitely a learning learning experience throughout this whole thing. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't have a friend that will just call them when they're pooping? I love it. Um, this photo he's about to slam down was supposed to be of his ex-girlfriend in the script. Uh, and ultimately, Chris Anderson and I, uh, Chris is the director of photographer, or cinematographer, if you will. He, uh, he and I agreed that that shouldn't be the main focus of the movie. Um, there was a lot more that goes on, and to have somebody mope... Uh, about about an ex of theirs uh, wasn't really the focus of his of, his, of the character, uh, so it ended up being my mom and my my uncle of all of all people. Fucking love that song. And this porch that we're shooting on now, uh, this whole scene takes place in my grandparents' house, and their house faces the west side, which is where the sun was setting, and we needed the golden hour. Um, I think it. I think it pulled off pretty well. For your lungs and stuff. Yeah, but then that means I'd have to live longer if I switch over now. I'm also living this life forever, man. And Casey's not a smoker by any means, and uh, the cigarettes that he is smoking in this is uh, uh, herbal cigarettes, which I had to do some research on, and he they burn really quick. I think with this scene, we went through like four different cigarettes because they burn so quick, and uh, they smell awful. I definitely would not recommend it, and he was a real sport for putting up with it because I'm sure they tasted awful. And this car, this, there's a fun story about this car. Uh, it's actually one of our producers, uh, Landon Casson's old car. And in all the projects that we've worked with together or worked on together, uh, we always end up using his car for whatever reason. And so I thought it was really fitting to just have have his best friend drive his car. I don't want to hear it. And in this scene right here, we're actually fighting the sound uh, for the freeway. There's a freeway right behind my grandparents' house. And this is a scene that I kind of wish I did ADR on. And I didn't want to tackle ADR because I was afraid, essentially. I, I very much did not understand exactly how to do post sound. And so uh, during editing, I had to, I had to dink with all the sound settings and I think I made it work, but um, definitely for future projects, I would, I'd looking forward to doing more ADR stuff and uh, making, making the sound sound great. I'm sorry. Cause in a lot of ways it kind of, you know, you can almost suppress your actor's performance if you're not doing the sound correctly. So audio is a huge thing. And everybody who did audio on this film did a fantastic job. And 
I think we shot this whole scene uh, on, on the second day. And this was actually one of our biggest shooting days because we had to shoot this exterior stuff first uh, during the golden hour um, for when they arrived to this party. And we have to deal with all the extras and uh, do all these different angles. And um, because right after this scene, actually, we had to cut to one of the morning scenes, uh, which we shot during the blue hour, which is after the golden hour. So we kind of cheated and shot something right before nighttime to give it like the morning vibe. So uh, we were kind of we were on a really tight schedule. And uh, the first AD, Jacob Smiley, he did a fantastic job at making sure we ran smoothly and got us out there on time. And like, this wouldn't have been possible without him, for sure. First ADs are very underrated. Hound a great Dane, you. I love Connor. That's Connor. Uh, he is actually a cinematographer. Uh, he's not an actor by any means, and I think he fits this role perfectly with his dreads. Uh, Landon and I kind of met him on another set, and he agreed to do it. Uh, he was actually really nervous to be on screen. Got drinks. Got Molly. But uh, his character is based off of somebody that I know who doesn't have dreads, but he had like this fun personality. And that's all Connor's idea right there was a sword. <laughs> Who brings a sword to a party? I love it. And here we are at a party sequence with all these extras. Uh, we shot this in my parents' house, actually. So we're back to my parents and we had, after we shot the blue hour stuff, we had to shoot this. So this was all the same night. Is the reality so and, uh, it was chaotic, very chaotic, but I think we pulled it off well and all these extras came over to this small condo and made it look look like a party. And this, is, this music, is again, is all my dad's stuff, so that was really great that he was able to compose all this on a very, very short timeline because we were rushing to get this done for uh, one of the local festivals here. I think I got it done like two days before the festival, but... And we, we ultimately decided to shoot at my parents' house because uh, they have a bar, which is right there with Emily and Aiden. Um, it fits the scene. I, I'm i glad we shot there with the bar. It, it adds a lot to the nuance and stuff. And this is another improvised scene from Lorenzo and Mary. This wasn't scripted at all, and they went for it. <laughs> I thought it was funny, so we had to keep that in. We have, we have so many different outtakes of that. And Mary Hall right here, she's she is such a sweetheart, and she gives us a damning look. Cuts right to the soul, and I absolutely love that. So he's driving my car, and it's sharp. Hey man, is there a place where I can smoke? Yeah, go upstairs on the back porch. So that's when I got my finger cut off. <laughs> um. This fire scene is actually the only scene that we had to reshoot uh, of all the stuff. Um, initially, we tried to do it on the very first night and uh, we were shooting on my parents' back patio, uh, but we had to fight crickets. The crickets ultimately won because we could not hear the actors speak at all. Um, really, I mean, location wise and sound, like you have to really do your research before you start shooting, you know? And that's something I, I learned. Uh, so we shot this reshot it, I should say, uh, at my grandparents' house in their backyard. And somebody from my work uh, let us borrow their fire pit. And this whole movie is actually, a lot of this movie is natural lighting. Um, I'm not going to say the whole movie because we definitely uh, lit some stuff up. But uh, this scene right here only has like one LED panel and then the rest of it is uh, natural cast of the, the fire. Have the same question be asked of you? Really, really cool shots. And I think Chris did a wonderful job at capturing that. And here you can also see that we're kind of fight sound with the, the freeway, so. Do you know Randall? I love this scene uh, because it kind of shows the chemistry between Mary, or not Mary, sorry, Emily and uh, Casey. Um, Emily actually, before we started shooting, she, she wanted to get into character. Uh, she wanted a character background, a character uh, breakdown. She she sent me photos of like the character's costume. She did all the costume design, and uh, 
I think she did a phenomenal job with this character, and especially later on in the script, because like the first half is essentially Casey's story. And as you will see, the last half is, is mostly uh, Emily's story. And they kind of meet in the middle uh, in the last couple of minutes. And I, I think it's a really cool full circle um, that was hopefully going for. Think of it like, um, like Phantom of the Opera. And I love this idea of uh, two strangers is totally talking um, at a party, at a fireside. And that's something that like I've experienced before. Uh, not necessarily to this extent of going out on an adventure, but definitely had some interesting conversations. And to this day, I still don't remember their names, but uh, it was very much just real and in the moment, you know, and that, that's kind of what kind of inspired this whole movie. Okay, stranger. I don't want to go back in there for reasons regarding. In this whole scene, uh, he learns her name, but she doesn't learn his name. And I wanted to keep that a thing throughout the whole movie. Because I thought it was kind of fun so, what do you say just to go out on a total adventure with a total stranger, not knowing their name or anything like that. You know, you just you just know that you met them at a party. And that's something that I I toyed with. Um, and I questioned if I would do that if I met somebody at a party, you know. And so really, they start on opposite ends. Um, and they were kind of the yin and the yang. That's the kind of idea I was going for with these two characters. Did Bilbo know any of those dwarves before setting out? Wow. It's tempting. Okay, fine. But it's only because you mentioned Lord of the Rings. Hobbit. Same universe, different story. Come on. Um. Now, if you're paying attention uh, when he was first smoking a cigarette um, on the patio in, in the very beginning, uh, that background is actually something we've seen before. This is still at my grandparents' house, and uh, we, we kind of cheated and did some movie magic and shot the same location, but we shot tighter uh, to, to make the background a little bit more out of focus. The depth of field. And so a lot of the script is actually based off of a uh, the hometown that I grew in, I grew up in, which is What's Cross City, and I kind of wrote it in areas that I knew that we could probably shoot in, and it'd be very doable for such a low budget because we only had a budget of like five hundred dollars, and so now that they're out in the adventure in the night, like a majority of this is shot in What's Cross City, and like right here we we're shooting at the police station, and we actually have. Uh, a lot of help from the, the police department in Woods Cross. And then that kind of goes back to like uh, who you know, because my stepdad uh, works for the city. And so he kind of gave us the tie in to meet with the, the chief of police. And uh, he lended us the car for a night. And it kind of it increases the production value. Um, I mean, for five hundred dollars, like I think this looks more than that, and I'm glad. That's something I'm, I'm proud to say. There's Landon right there, uh, the young cop. Jesus fucking Christ! That's the fifth time this month. Look, I'm sorry, all right, but I don't have time to lock the fucking door when I'm busy carrying some handcuffed drunk at the station. I, I got him to drop the f bomb. Well, Landon never drops the f bomb. He's such a nice guy, and uh, he's very, very not the kind of person that to. to just just swear for the sake of swearing, but I, I got him to drop that and I thought it was kind of funny. So, so you expect me to push the button like and this whole scene is just a like comedy relief, you know, just two two dumb cops. My keys to lock the fucking door so my dick of an asshole boss will stop yelling at me. But wait, in the meantime... And while we're shooting this whole scene, we actually uh, had uh, people driving around interrupting our shots because when you have cop lights and cameras everywhere, people annoyingly drive while you're in the middle of shooting and ruin the whole shot. And uh, my, my piece of advice is if you see boom mics up and cameras and lights everywhere, chances are it's normal and not to be a douchebag about it and drive through the, through the shot. I love how strict Derek is in this. And this was actually our last night of shooting. 
Um, this whole chase sequence. We shot this all until like, I think four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, maybe. There was a, was a lot of long nights. And I think um, the night before this, we actually did an all nighter. So. In this scene right here, this fence, uh, right before the scene cuts to the police station, this is the same location actually, so just another area of cheating. Oh shit, I don't know. Now a lot of people have asked me what exactly is Derek talking into, and my idea behind that was um, how cops talk into their jackets in movies, or secret agent movies, you know, and I thought that was kind of the thing for like undercover cops or whatever. Um, but I was starting to realize that probably was not the case and I, I probably should have taken more, more care and, uh, props for him, you know, like a cell phone or something. And it's kind of lazy on my end for, for that, but it's kind of, it's still kind of quirky. I think it's very fitting for his character. Don't say my name. You know, I hate my fucking name. Now this is actually where the movie gets a little bit more serious and like this music that my dad does transitions into it really nice. And uh, this park, this park was fun to shoot at. Uh, this is actually a park that uh, I grew up by. Uh, my house that I grew up in was like around the area and I had endless nights walking through this park. And so a lot of the script, I'm telling you, uh, it was exactly, too many kids running around. it was exactly that, like writing down exterior park. Like, I mean, this is the exact park that I, I pictured, you know, and uh, it, it kind of made it easier to do this too because my stepdad having worked with the city uh he had access to turn off sprinklers or um so other stuff that we kind of needed for the night stuff x used to do it and you'll actually let's see you'll probably hear kids coming up um screaming and that's not a sound effect that were, there were actual kids at this park with like a huge family reunion function at 10 o'clock at night. Uh, they were being very loud and uh, I thought this was this was another scene that I would, I would have had to, to do ADR. Now at this point, I was looking at doing ADR. I was dreading it, but I'm with those kids screaming, I, I was very afraid I was going to have to do ADR. And uh, ultimately, I, I made it kind of tie into the to movie, um, I think anyway. So... Uh, definitely not a sound effect. That was definitely on audio, and so. Relationships and the negativity that happens. But why not focus on that? There's no reason to. And this is I, pretty much where the the two actors are getting very raw and very very real with each other. You know, starting to show sides that uh, we haven't seen yet. Those sheep. What kind of a person isn't perfect at first, huh, Marley? I love this music, too. Um, every time there's a question asked, my dad put a little piano piano piece in there. Sorry. And this is actually a scene I had no idea what the music was going to be. Um, even uh, in the script, I thought it was going to be just a quiet moment with no music. And uh, ultimately, my dad, he, he came up with something and I thought it was very, very much... Deep. It gave the it gave the scene a lot of depth. That's why trust goes a long way. So those two people over there. What about them? This is probably their first date. What? And I love how his character now is just like, well, we're gonna make this this adventure a little bit more interesting. You know, take it a step further of talking to other strangers, but, um, and, uh, Eric Osmond who plays, uh, him right there. I forgot the character's name. Oh, well, wow. uh, he, that's not a real tattoo. I mean, that's Sharpied. He, he Sharpied the tattoo and, uh, he showed up with that. And I, I thought it was really, you know, it adds a lot to the character. Uh, these, these actors, you have to trust the actors. A lot of the time, the actors know more than uh, the director and writer, and I, I, that's something you have to trust them with, you know? What the fuck's she doing, too? Fuck, man! She's not 
killing you too? Yeah, well, fuck you. 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 This is a fun scene to shoot. And I, just, I love the idea of how uh, Casey's character decides to go and talk to these strangers, you know, and make make it more of an interesting night. Like on top of getting chased by cops because you 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 hijacked a cop car, um, taking a step further and talking to these people, and then it turns out they actually know uh, Emily's character Marley, and it just causes more of a dilemma for, for the two characters, which is right here where they're, they're letting. He didn't know. And the girl in the background right there, that's Camille. Um, she was a behind the scene photographer and I, she captured a lot of good, or a lot of good moments um, while we were shooting this. And uh, her sister actually did a musical piece for this, which I'll bring up um, when we come across that scene. But uh, we, we, there was a lot of connections throughout this whole movie for everybody. And I just love that. Serious? Well, well, well. Looky who we have here. Turn off the lights, Jim. I knew it was you who broke my car. Damn, Marley. Mom told you to stop. And this scene was meant to be a, a revelation that she was actually just play, play, playing a prank on her brother. Um, and so I, I think it kind of says some stuff for her character where before she was, you know, definitely messing with the cop car and like, ooh, that's so edgy. And uh, then you realize that no, it's actually her brother. Um, and so it was it as edgy as she was letting on, you know, um, and that cameo, uh, that's by yours truly. I, I did a little cameo. Uh, it was either I do sound or I do a cameo and I, I, you know, I don't do sound. So I opted for the little cameo instead. Mama's not going to be happy about this. And there goes our producer. <laughs> I know you're worried about your boyfriend for whatever now, this whole scene right here, uh, we, we did not have any lights set up for this. This is all natural lighting with the street lights on the street that we decided to shoot in. And I love that camera moving on both those. Uh, and Chris did such a great job with, with the cinematography. And uh, you, find out, you find out uh, a lot of footage to play with uh, when, when you're editing and uh, being able to piece those two together, uh, the both move-ins, it was definitely... Impactful. Marley, I, I didn't mean to say that. And this is kind of where uh, Emily really gets in touch with her character, and uh, she brought so much depth to Marley. Uh, she really did more so than I could have done on paper. So, and um, it's this is kind of where it kind of turns into Marley's side of the story. And the idea is that she doesn't she doesn't leave um, abusive relationships. Like this is the same guy that uh, she gave examples of, just barely, you know. Get the fuck in the car now, baby. It's not what you, you think. think. You can steal my no, girl. It's not what you think, my girl. Babe. Oh, that looks like such a real punch. Uh, Aiden did a fantastic job playing Logan, and he um, he he was very nice and just like asking me constantly if. If he could uh, do a little bit more, and I'm like, yeah, you know, just just go with it and do do what exactly uh, you feel that your character would do, and he 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 brought a lot to it. Uh, I love that camera turnaround. One of my favorite shots. Uh, something I do wish we got here was actually um, seeing Aiden get knocked out, uh, or seeing that his stomach moving up and down to imply that he's breathing, uh, because as you'll see in a couple minutes, uh, it looks like he's dead. And it's something people have asked me uh, if he is, and no, no, he's not. It's just something that was in the script that uh, we we were kind of short on time for and didn't didn't have time to catch. So, and the idea for this scene, at one point we were toying with just keeping it as a one shot, which is this shot right here, um, but we due to sound uh because there is a freeway and a train yard uh in this location we had a cut and i'm kind of glad that we did cut because we get to see these uh interactions and these, these emotions kind of come through with each actor and the music that's playing in the scene so this is actually camille's uh sister carly uh i met carly through twitter 
and she's a local musician. And I reached out to her asking if she would do a piece for this because it's such a raw moment. And I've always pictured like a little guitar uh, playing in the background. And uh, there's a TV show, uh, Californication, uh, that has a similar vibe to it um, involving the, the, uh, the main character and his daughter. And there's, there's a really cool guitar piece playing with that. And so that kind of inspired uh, this whole setup. And Carly agreed to do it. And I thought it was really cool because it's a local artist helping a local f- filmmaker, helping local actors, you know, and like everything felt local and kind of unified, you know. So uh, it kind of adds a lot more to like the mobile coordinates that, uh, that we were going for. Some people choose to not see them. Hoping for some sort of change. And I love this exchange between them. Again, very raw and very real and uh, very vulnerable. Uh, that, that was what I was going for, um, hopefully. so. Sometimes you have to be the person that says no more. Be who you are. If that doesn't make people happy, then fuck them. I mean, people can be straight up selfish assholes. And a lot of Casey's dialogue is an uh, inner dialogue that I've had with myself um, quite a bit. And, like the whole interaction is just kind of inner dialogue of things that could possibly be said in that moment, you know. And uh, it was kind of fun just kind of exploring that in the writing process. And uh, I actually wrote the script. Uh, like five years before I started film school. Um, it was just on the whim as a practice. And then uh, during one of my last semesters for for a screenplay class, I pulled it back out and I fixed it up with like what I what I learned and uh, actually submitted it to the Utah Film Festival and Awards and it was nominated for Best Short Screenplay in 2018. So uh, after that, I, that summer of, you know, I, I decided to get Landon and uh, make this project for once and for all. Which is kind of neat because uh, after graduation, um, this this wasn't a student project anymore, you know, like this is definitely something that I should be uh, proud and showcase. We only have an hour until the sun comes up. I love the idea of these two characters just smoking on a curbside after like all these interactions, like, um, just kind of a classic vibe. And I love that shot right there. Having fun going out with a stranger, not knowing if my body would end up in a ditch. <laughs> Speaking of bodies, what are you going to do with him? And there's Aiden. So here he is alive. Um, I even. This is the only part I ADR'd, and it's my voice groaning, uh, <laughs> which is supposed to be him groaning. And to really sell that, no, he's still alive. She she just knocked him out, you know, and I just kind of wish we got just a little bit more shots there. But uh, ultimately, when you're short on time and uh, people are pulling all-nighters for you, uh, you kind of you, you, you want to respect their time. And there, there have been plenty of shoots I've been on where uh, respecting other people's times was not a thing. And that's something I wanted to make sure that I didn't cross the boundaries of. So, uh, I am grateful for all the opportunities, uh, that everybody involved gave me and that I gave them. And right here, this is the blue hour shot. Um, this is something we shot in the second day actually. And, this is after the whole party introduction, and uh, it was really weird because uh, we didn't know exactly what the middle part looked like. When you're missing the middle part and you're shooting the last part, it's, uh, it's really nerve-wracking because if you don't get it right, then you have to reshoot. You know, It's going to make things more complicated, but I, I absolutely love the scene, and like this music is so pivotal. What does that even mean? I don't know. I'm still with Logan. I mean, who knows if that's... Now, I love how, you know, basically both accept that this might be the last time seeing each other. Just to take the night for like what it was and uh, not take it for granted. 
There's Aiden right there. Uh, originally in the script, Aiden's character was in the house. Just a side note, uh, that whisper right there, uh, not scripted at all. Um, I, d I didn't know what she wanted to say, and I, 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 I told Emily to say, to say something in his ear, but I didn't want to know. I want to be part of the audience, and uh, it's kind of very much lost in translation, which didn't connect till after uh, this was even released. Like, that's kind of where I realized that inspiration came from. Um, but anyway, so Aiden's character was actually in the house. Uh, watching that that kiss and we kind of um, moved it you know it was kind of like a fuck you to his character and we kind of moved it on the outside because some schedule conflicts but and here's Mary again I really love this with uh, Casey's character I mean this is pretty much his whole arc and his whole closure of uh, letting his girlfriend go and, or his ex-girlfriend should say go and I'll leave and that car right there was actually not in the shot at all uh, that was actually some neighbor and we uh it looks like she's walking toward the car getting picked up and i, I thought it was a really cool um opportunity to include that in the movie and this right here is actually our very first night of shooting um yeah we shot the last scene the first night and i mean talk about nerves <laughs> You know, I think he does. Motherfucker told me that he would quit. I don't know if you can see, but Landon's on that couch in the very background asleep. Do you know him? Shane? Yeah. And this is a moment where she actually uh, finds out his name. And, uh, oh. you know, after saying goodbye and then she finally figures out his name. Like, I, I, I absolutely love that idea. Especially this response. Let me get your name. Just go out there and join him. What? Do you want to tell your name to people you trust? Yeah. Beautiful. It kind of plays with the idea that uh, when you meet a stranger, uh, how you just knowingly trust them, you know? And uh, I, I thought it was very fitting for her to, you know, like, oh, hey, I, I, I know his name. And I, I, but he knew my name before that. Like, why, why was I so open with him? You know, and it's kind of just annoyingly trusting. And I don't know, it's kind of fun. And there's a, a Polish filmmaker named uh, Krzysztof Kowalski. I think that's how you pronounce his name. We had a quote about how if you meet somebody in a coffee shop, like that might be the last time you ever see them. And basically not to miss the opportunity, you know, and that's not the exact quote. Like, I don't remember the exact quote, but uh this actually, that's actually inspiration for like a lot of my uh, writings lately, so. Yeah. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> kind of mocking the first shot of them in the car, in the back seat. And then this is the very last shot right here, and we shot this the first night, and this was this is what I did not know it was going to work until we got all the footage and I think it turned out turned out beautiful, you know, playing with her, her engagement ring. And as you can see, we actually didn't focus on the ring at all and throughout the whole thing, um, kind of like how we didn't focus on uh, Casey's ex-girlfriend uh, because that wasn't the primary focus of her character. And uh, but, yeah, her character was indeed engaged to, to Logan. And after this night, you know, she's contemplating and it was meant to be left up to the audience. Um to decide what she's going to do. So anyway, that is that's all I got for you. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in and listening and uh, hopefully take away something from it. Uh, I, I included bloopers in here because it actually showcases how much fun we all had. Uh, I don't think anybody hated the shoot and I'm very proud to say that. Uh, it was just fun. Uh, just a fun summer shoot. It really was. I think we shot this in four nights for $500. So anyway, I'm going to let these play. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you to the cast and crew for, for making this an experience worth telling. And thank you so much. Bye. That sound when that foot goes on top of you, I'm going to kick your ass. Can I punch him? No. <laughs> you guys want to get fucked up? Let's get fucked up. Let's get fucked up. Let's get fucked up. Hi-ho! Oh, we're going in? Whatever, we'll block it out. <laughs> we got...
don't know. Just your hands feel so like manly. <laughs> 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 if you wash your hands, they're kind of gross. Oh, that was a bad spot. Oh, we need chapstick. Action! Oh, shit. I didn't drop it. Let's start back here. Can we start back here or something? Still rolling. Where my fucking glasses go? What the fuck, Knuckles? Let's party.